Shalom. We are here today to show you how to set up a Seder plate for, for a Seder celebration with yourself and your family and your friends and your enemies, whoever you want to invite over to celebrate Passover, the Passover Seder itself. So we're going to be going through different parts of this so you will know what to get, what to buy, how to set up your tables. It's really quite simple, so don't fret, don't worry. We'll go through this and you'll, you'll see and you can... The video will be available on the website, and you can go through it as many times as you want to make sure you have everything you need. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go through item at item here, and, uh, and in a little bit of a random order. Just want you to understand, first of all, it says that you cannot celebrate Passover without three items, the lamb, unleavened bread, and bitter herbs. Of course, we know the day that Yeshua is our lamb, so we have a bone that represents him, and I'll be showing that to you uh, before long, a, a, a bone actually from a lamb. So we're going to start off with the Seder plate. We're going to show you the Seder plate itself. So here we have the Seder plate. Now you can use any plate you would like uh, in your house to put the elements on, but there are plates available with beautiful designs on them. And some of them actually label what you should have on it. Now we don't use everything they label on it because some of these things are Babylonian traditions and we don't do that. Uh, but you can see on here you have a place for an egg, which is a Babylonian tradition. You have horseradish, which is bitter herbs that's required for Passover. You have parsley, which is, again, another Babylonian idea of new life. You have the shank bone of a lamb, which represents the lamb of God itself. You have another category here that says bitter herbs. We already had bitter herbs over here, so but they listed it again for those people who want to... Uh, have two bitter herbs. There is a tradition on that, but we only do the one. In the middle here, you see the Hebrew word for Pesach, uh, Passover, and uh, so that's the plate. And so, but like I said, you can use a regular plate if you want, so don't worry about having the proper plate or not. Uh, next item I want to talk about is the, the bone. This is the shank bone of a lamb. You can get a shank bone of lamb anywhere you want from a butcher uh, when they serve up mutton and lamb to eat. Just go to the butcher and say, hey, I need a bone from a lamb because they, they usually just throw them away. And most butchers are pretty nice about it. They'll get you a bone. The bitter herbs concept, we use horseradish. And uh, this particular horseradish is extra hot. Uh, why do I want extra hot? Because I want you to suffer? <laughs> no. The whole idea is that it's supposed to bring tears to your eyes. That's why you have the bitter herbs. Do you remember the cries and the tears of the Hebrew slaves in Egypt? So don't go buying some smooth, creamy horseradish that doesn't do anything to you. Get the hot kind. Let it bring tears to your eyes. The, uh, the parsley, right here, the parsley, a green herb, which represents life. That was, became a new uh, Babylonian tradition, too. So that you can easily buy a parsley at a, at a store, uh, any supermarket at all, and put it on the plate also. So the matzah. Matzah. As you notice here, I've got three matzahs or matzots here. And uh, when you're doing a Passover Seder, we're going through the Haggadah to explain why there's three. But you must have the matzah, which is unleavened bread. That's one of the elements you must have. So you can go at any grocery store to buy that. But I would recommend you better hurry to get it. Because if you wait until the day before Passover, a lot of times you cannot get matzah. Because it's, everybody's cleaned it off the shelves already. But three of them, you stack together. And... and uh, is what they call a unity setup or a unity napkin. There are actually linen containment things that will allow you to do it. We really just like to put our three together under a napkin because you're going to be taking it out and breaking it, doing all kinds of things. Along with that, with the uh, unleavened bread, is the afikoman bag. The afikoman bag is very important, but you can use a napkin, anything you want, particularly particularly this white, like a white linen napkin or even a white paper towel, 
whatever. Why is that important? Because in the middle of the service, you're going to be taking the middle portion of the matzah out and breaking it in two and putting half in this and then hiding it away, which represents the burial of Yeshua. So this is called the Afikoman bag, because toward the end of the service, we'll bring it forth again. And that word Afikoman is Greek. That means I came. Uh, Yeshua did come, and he did give us eternal life. So that's the Afikoman bag itself. A little bit further over. Uh, continuing on, you're going to need a set of, of candles and candle sticks that, uh, that the woman of the house will light at the beginning of the Seder. Now these are oil. You don't need the oil. You can use regular candles. Just be very careful inside your house with any kind of open flame. And remember that uh, you don't need oil like we got here, oil candlesticks. You could use a regular wax candlesticks, but make sure you have a place to collect the wax so it doesn't ruin your beautiful table uh, settings. Also, you're going to need a bowl of salt water. So you see right there, you fill that up with water and put some salt in it. And during the process, you'll be dipping uh, like the parsley into it and to remind you of the tears of the Hebrew children uh, when they were slaves in Egypt. Also, you're going to need a Kiddush cup, a Kiddush cup that you will pour. Uh, it's up to you. You can put grape juice in it or you can put red wine. It's got to be red. It's got to be purple like grape juice because that represents blood. And so you can't decide, well, I'm going to just use white wine. I mean, you can, but uh, you're missing the whole point. And so uh, red wine or grape juice, well, you'll put in that, and uh, different times during the service, you'll take different sips. So you're going to need one for every one that's attending your Passover Seder. You'll see a special cup here. The special cup is known as the Elijah cup. At the end of the ceremony, the, the host of the ceremony will lift up that cup and uh, represent Elijah, who said he'll come back on the great and dreadful day of the coming of the Lord. So they always set it out to be, to be reminded that Elijah's coming. That's one of the things that must happen before the Lord comes back, uh, Elijah. And so these things are important uh, to have on your table. Pretty simple, actually, to do this. And you don't need to have a great expense at it. Next, we're going to move over here about the Harl Set. Harl Set is the right way to pronounce it. Uh, just don't stand next to anybody when you pronounce it with a Harl set. <laughs> so in making the Harl set, it's pretty simple. The reason and purpose of the Harl set, it represents the mortar of the bricks that the Hebrews had to, to use to build the cities for Pharaoh when they were slaves. Now, the, the, the Hebrews did not build the pyramids or the Sphinx. They built cities for Pharaoh. But it was hard, hard labor because Pharaoh was trying to make sure they didn't have time to have children, because Pharaoh was getting scared of how many Hebrews were being born in his land. So Harl's set reminds us of that situation of the Hebrews when they worked as slaves for Pharaoh. So I'm going to briefly tell you how to make Harl's set. All right, so this bowl here, it has nothing to do with Harl's set, but this bowl here reminds you that you need a bowl of water and a napkin on the table. Because there are certain places in the Seder you need to wash your hands symbolically. So you need to have a water basin and a napkin to dry the hands off with for everybody that's attending the Seder. Now when making Harl Set, it's just a mixture of certain ingredients. One is the apple. So you want to peel the apple and decor it and chop it up into small pieces, the apple itself. Then you're going to need nuts, particularly walnuts here. Now, if you have nut allergies, then skip the walnuts. But if nobody has nut allergies, then you need to chop up walnuts and put it in it. A little bit of cinnamon uh, goes a long way. Some people put honey in it. So uh, cinnamon you put in there. Or brown sugar. Brown sugar is, a, is something you add to it. And you just mix it to your liking, to your taste. But remember, though, during the ceremony, you've got to dip it with the matzah. So it cannot be runny, and, you got, and it's got to be fine or you know, soft enough for you to dip it with the matzah. Uh, so that's how you make Carl's set. Real easy, no big deal. Apples, nuts, cinnamon, brown sugar. 
and then you have Harl set. Oh, I almost left one thing out. You got to mix your red wine or grape juice into it also. So at the end, mix your grape juice, red wine into the texture that you want to, to make the Harl set the way you want. Otherwise, it'd be very dry if you didn't have that. So the, the, the wine or the grape juice makes it more fluid, and that's what you need. So pretty simple, you know, to set up a Passover table, a Seder table. And uh, so I hope you took notes. If not, watch the video again and uh, head for your, your, your local butcher and get a shank bone from a lamb to represent the Passover lamb and get to the store early to get your matzah. And you might, even horseradish might disappear pretty fast. Usually there's plenty of parsley to go around. So I hope this video helped you and getting your table ready to join us for a virtual Passover very soon. And so you can celebrate it, everything that we do with us as we follow on the Haggadah, or you can follow along with the PowerPoint that will be presented also. So God bless everybody. Shalom and shalom.